お待たせしました。So, I have kept everybody waiting.、Uh, this is the review for the original m a c r o s s TV series. I literally just finished watching it. I just finished watching the final episode just now. And I'm going to talk about it in comparison to the movie edition. And do you remember Love? Because I have already gone into how much I, you know, absolutely love Do You Remember Love. And of course, like, so many of the aspects of the TV series were re. were rearranged to fit in the movie. And they, they moved some events around and things like, you know,、um, They, like in the TV series in episode 27, which is I Want Nagareru, it's the final battle between the Zendradi and, and humanity, which is depicted at the end of the movie with Ayo Wood de Mosca, right?、Um, now, <clears throat> the, they, they move some events around, but in general, It's like outside the events that don't line up, you know, like the,、um, the period of when the earth is wiped out, because that happens when Zen the Zentradi first arrive at Earth, whereas in the TV series, it isn't until, the, until episode 27, right before the final battle.、Um, it's.、Uh, they. they Did change that around. Max is a little older in the、um, in the movie. I think it's like a year older in the movie version.、Um, uh, what is that? Of course, you know the, the Skull Squadron versus Vermilion Squadron things are going to be different. <clears throat> But,、um, and then,、uh, of course, you know, Roy's death, Kakizaki's death are both very different.、Um, The, the TV series starts all this. But、um, I think the, the points, like, when you have such an amazing movie as Do You Remember Love, why should you go back and watch the original m a c c r o s s TV series?、Um, I want to keep this kind of positive. Although, there, of course, I'm going to acknowledge that a lot of the animation in the TV series is really. Really, really bad、um, due to、um, time constraints and various other reasons, and outsourcing to、um, a Korean company to do some animation, which is why most of the scenes with Miria look awful, which pisses me off as a Max and Miria fan.、Um, and, you know, especially because I do like Miria in the TV series a lot.、Um, I like the. the They, they give her a, more screen time. And same with Max, too. Like, Max and Mary get like, almost no screen time in the, the movie outside of their, you know, like, their, their one on one battle with each other after she kills Kakizaki. But、um, the, I, I think the. Beyond the, the obvious things.、Um, Why should you watch the TV series? And I think it's for the characters. Now, I'm going to start with some minor characters and then move up to the, the main characters.、Um, now, the <clears throat> one reason to enjoy the TV series is the three Zentradi,、uh, Rodi. Bromuko and、um, uh, Water It Up. The three that, be, that go on to the Macross as spies, then they go back to you know, the Zentradi, and、um, then they, they create a mutiny, and then they all escape to, to run back to the Macross to live there as, as、um, refugees, basically.、Um, the, their characters are very well done, and I think that.、Um, They get very little screen time in the post war stuff. I mean, they get more than Maximiria, which pisses me off. But、um, 
but the screen time they get in the post war is actually really good for them um, because you can see that they really took to culture and they are trying to like make like make a living for themselves they're like they work at a, a, a cleaning come uh, a cleaning place then because they get fired from that they try to like sell toys to kids for Christmas um, you know they you can see that they actually really took on to um, uh, uh, they they really believed in what um, what they saw from uh, Mimi and what like living on the macros and things. The next three characters I think um, need incredible push are the three operator girls, Kim, Vanessa, and Shami. They are so good in the TV series. Like, and this is one of the gripes I've had with with you know more recent Macross, especially you know Macross Delta. And I've mentioned this in in various videos about Delta and even Frontier. Um, although Frontier, in a lesser extent, but um, Frontier also has this issue as well, where the um, bridge operator girls are completely ignored. As Delta, it's really bad. They're they, they, because there's so many other characters in the even in the Delta TV series that you don't get a good, you know, expansion of their characters within 26 episodes. And yes, I do realize that the original Macross TV series is like, what, 37 or 39 episodes, something like that. Um, and I do understand the difference in the length of the series actually having something to do with that, and that has to do with modern Japanese animation, you know, shitting all over, you know, what good, well-made stuff like the original Macross is. <clears throat> but the, the the three operator girls get ton of screen time. They're very interesting. They're good for comic relief. I mean, I'm watching it in Japanese, so it's it's gonna come off differently because I'm watching it in Japanese. But I found them to be a f to be very very good characters, very well thought out characters. And this is kind of a I've mentioned this in my Do you remember Love uh, review? Is I thought they deserve more screen time in the movie but the one scene that they get in the coffee shop inside the macross was really really good it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie but i love how they get so much attention in the tv series um i also um claudia claudia is a very important character to me in the tv series and i think she gets she doesn't get enough attention in the movie when it comes to what happens to Roy. Now, we all know that she finds, like, Roy basically, like, she realized he got shot in the back and he basically bled out and then she took him to the hospital and he died there when she was there. Um, whereas in the movie, um, he's killed by Comagene in... Uh, in a fight and Claudia is not there for it so she doesn't actually get to see it but I think that um, the aftermath of Roy's death and the fact that Kakizaki's death is the very next fucking episode it's like victory gun him <laughs> you know kill one then kill another kill another kill another and keep on going right um, but um, <clears throat> I thought that Claudia and her reaction to Roy's death was amazing. I thought that, you know, in the post-war stuff, when sh there's a specific episode where she, she's sitting and talking to to Misa about um, about Roy when they first met and during the, the Unification War and all this other stuff. And um, it's, you know, they, there's so much backstory given to Claudia and Roy's relationship. It's so good. Um... I think that that's another good reason to watch the TV series. <clears throat> um, I I think that um, Kamajin is a, I think is a better character in the post-war stuff, 
I, I kind of find him as like, you know, the villain of the week who gets foiled by the good guys every time he, he goes out and fights them. At, like, during the, the, the wartime era. Um, but I do enjoy his his stuff and and stuff with Abramis and the, the post-war stuff, too. Um, uh, now, for those who don't realize this scene is from the episode I want not that it it's from episode 27 um when you frontier fans who've never bothered to sit and actually watch the original TV series or the delta fans who've never like gone beyond you know frontier um who look at that s the scenes with the windows in the background and say oh well the the scene from the second delta movie that's that's an homage to Sonata and it's the second Mac the second frontier movie the original scene is this one I'm showing here on the screen when um, Hikaru basically says goodbye to Minme and before the final battle starts and she's seeing Aiwa Nagareru and they have a kiss here and this is the scene that those scenes are paying homage to um, and this scene is extremely powerful to me. I think that there's some scenes um, that are done much better in the TV series, and I think that this is one of them. Before Hikaru goes out and um, uh, uh, goes to 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 fight, and then he ends up getting you know blown back and he ends up landing on Earth and and, and risking Hayase and then the Macross dies and then it's automatically two years later. So it's in 2011. <clears throat> but, um... But this scene and this episode in particular, I think for anybody who's watched um, the movie and you see the final battle and you see the, the lead up to how Ichijo gets me made a sing at the end and stuff... I, I really think that um, the the lead up in uh, in the TV series is better, um, and I I firmly believe that the <coughs> um, this scene in particular is a perfect reason why. Um, now, don't get me wrong, and I'm not bashing Do you Remember Love whatsoever because. Do you remember it was my favorite movie, period, whether it's animated, non-animated, or whatever. And I'm never going to change my opinion about that. Um, I'm just trying to give people a reason, because people have heard me talk so much about the canon of Matt Cross and all this other stuff, right? Um, I really want people to feel a reason to watch the TV series. Do you remember Love is Amazing? It is the most amazing movie ever, period. End of story. But... Um, there's so much in the TV series that's like, cause like the stuff with the protoculture that they kind of explain in the TV series is directly put into the movie exactly as is talking about the protoculture, except the difference is it's not coming from Exodore doing some kind of, you know, uh, like research to find out about protoculture and whatnot. It's through the actual protoculture ruins that Hayase and Ichijo find on earth. And I think that is a better sequence than the way it's done in the TV series, um, which is done in the post-war era, by the way. Um, so the last, like, 12 episodes or whatever the, the, of the series is, is the, the post-war. <clears throat> um, and I, I think that definitely the movie is better on explaining that. Um, I think that... Um, uh, the the other character I think that needs more attention is um, Ichijo a little bit. I'm not gonna go too deeply into to Hikaru very much because people know Hikaru and whatever. People think he's the main character and all this other stuff, which is you know perfectly reasonable assumption to make. But I'll go into my explanations for something different later. Um, I I thought that. In the TV series, he came off um, almost like Aruto, and I hate Aruto as a character. I, I think he's just like wandering around, blah blah blah. And Hikaru is out there fighting, and you know, the 
after Kakizaki's killed, and he has to kind of write the the letter to the parents for, about his son dying, their son dying in battle, and stuff like that. And you see like his full emotions at that, at how hard it is for him to do that. And Max gets him to like go out and do stuff. Um. Uh, I, I think Ichijo in the movie is a little bit better of a character. I think he's better done. But I'm. I'm not gonna go much more beyond that I'm gonna complain about Max a bit because I thought that Max was treated too um uh like he he's so immature until he meets Miria and then they get married and all that other stuff right and I thought that they they made him like look up to Ichijo way too much um Whereas in the movie, of course, Ichijo's gone for a month after the fold and all that other stuff. So it ends up being that Max becomes the leader of Skull Squadron. And then Max disappears with Miria inside her ship. So then Ichijo becomes the leader of Skull Squadron again. It's all a jumbled mess. But, it, I mean, at least Max has more of a development process there. Where in the, in the TV series, he doesn't so much. There's a lot of good character moments with him. But I think that he's better done in the movie. I just wish he had more scenes in the movie. Um, uh, because I'm a Maximaria fanboy. But we do get tons of Maximaria in Mac Cross 7. And, and of course we get lots and lots of Max in, in Delta. So I, I'm, you know, I can't complain too much, right? <clears throat> um, now, I thought that... Hayase's character was done extremely well. She's, you know, you can see some of the, the, like, she's not as cold as she is in the movie, but, um, and I think they, they purposely changed that because they wanted to create more of a conflict between her and Ichijo, so when they finally do fall in love together, it's actually a little more believable in that sense, whereas in the TV series, I thought it was more believable than the movie. Um, because Hayase just, you know, Claudia keeps telling her, quit, quit holding back and just be honest with yourself and honest with Hikaru and tell him your feelings and she keeps pushing it off and she's, you know, doubting herself and she, you know, can't ever, you know, bring herself to, you know, explain, like to, to, um, uh, express herself. Whereas in, um, the movie i thought um the progression was natural but it seemed a little rushed because of the the time allotted for a movie because only like two hours right so um i do like hayase now let's get on to mime because i believe she's the main character um and you know, people are gonna argue about this. This is up to my. This is my review. This is my interpretation of it. Okay. I think Mime gets the most character development out of any character in the entire show, in in the the TV series. This scene is absolutely amazing. Um, that's on the screen. Um, but in the post where you see her situation with with um her cousin with Ning Kaifun. Kaihun and you know um uh you can see like he's kind of abusive towards her and and you know he's you know um kind of like holding her back in a lot of ways but um you know the entire time Ichijo still thinks about Mime even though at the time in the early part of the post-war stuff he doesn't even see her um, and he can't get a chance to talk to her or anything. And then Hayase being jealous, you know, um, you know, tries to prevent them from, prevent Ichijo from talking to Mime. But I think that, um, Mime as a character has the most development. You have to think that at the beginning of the show, she's, what, uh, 15 going on 16. She's still, you know, very childish. Um, and, you know between her and her now budding music career on the Macross and then Ichijo being a pilot and then they 
can't actually, you know, talk to each other very much. Um, uh, one scene that, that shows how immature she is is the um, uh, episode Burst Point, which is where Kakizaki dies, which is the, which is the episode after Pine Salad, which is, you know, episode Roy dies. Um, the... The, it shows how childish she is by when she tries to call Hikaru to come see her in the hospital after she, you know, collapsed from being overworked. Um, and she has, she doesn't understand why Hikaru is so sad or anything like that. She doesn't bother to care about him. She's very, very self-centered and everything like that. And in the post-war, once she, you know, um, realizes, you know, because it's been two years... Um, like you can see that she's grown up in a, a lot of ways, but in other ways she hasn't. Um, the, um, the like she tries to get Ichijo at the end of the series to quit being a pilot, and then she said, "Well, I'll quit being a singer if you quit being a pilot," and all this other stuff. Um, which in the movie is <clears throat> cut back to one sequence. Um. Where she says, where, um, she's like, well, why can't everybody's, um, why can't I be with you alone for a month or something like that? Um, why, um, why should I sing? I, you know, um, I just want to be with you and all this other stuff. Um, and then, uh, he got to slap her. In the TV series, he doesn't slap her. Um... But, like, you could tell that immaturity with her, like, that, you know, like, she still has an influence from, from Kai Hoon and stuff like that, and, and she, you know, she finally realizes that she needs to find out, um, uh, like, to sing for herself, and then she wants to go on the immigration ship when Hayase becomes captain, which is basically, I went the the stuff that ha that you see in flashback twenty uh, flashback twenty twelve which is you know about uh, the Mega Road one leaving Earth <clears throat> which that so the TV series does actually connect to flashback as well but it not very directly um, now in terms of the the Valkyries there's one thing that I noticed and one thing that I need to point out um, one thing I'm going to point out uh, which is um, it's in the final episode only, is um, that Hikaru is like playing with a little model or toy of the VF4 Lightning. So they already had the, so Kawamori already had the idea of having another Valkyrie, a next generation Valkyrie, going forward with that. In, do you remember Love? Ichijo has it in his room uh, when Mime comes into his room after they. Uh, after she sees them again, after um, like they have the three Zentradi sent over to um, the Macross and stuff like that. But um, there was always a plan to have the VF4, um, the VF4 uh, Lightning 3. So that's already there. You get to see actually flying in um, in uh, in flashback. So. You could connect the TV series to Flashback 2012. Um, however, the um, the story on how um, Mean May fights with her parents about becoming a, a pop singer and stuff, and then she runs away to go on the Macross. Um, that happens in the TV series. Ichijo takes her to Yokohama to see her parents in Chinatown in Yokohama, and that's where they have the fight. And then Lin Kai Hoon is introduced in that particular episode. Um, whereas that happens pre-war and pre mean me boarding the Macross in the movie version. And so the uh, scenes that are in Flashback 2012 are related to the stories that she talked about in the movie and not the TV series. Because they came to Earth once and they're, they're kicked off of Earth because, you know, the, the Earth government wants them to be like... Uh, they want them to keep the Zentradi off of, away from Earth while they prepare other stuff, right? 
you have to excuse me, I'm a little sleepy, so I'm yawning a little bit, but, um, so, the idea of the VF4 Lightning was there, there could be connections of Flashback 2012, even through the TV series, um, the other thing I want to make mention is in the very first episode, as, as the first episode of the TV series in Japanese was a, like, an hour and a half special, and they call it the Macro Special, and it's, um, the opening of the first episode is the only one that's actually different from the rest of the series. Just like the very final episode of the series, Runner is sung by Minmei, not by the guy, by Ijimamari, not by the guy who is singing it for the entire series. So they, so there, there are a couple little things here that are strict to that, but the one thing I noticed is from the very first episode was they talk about the Ghost Squadron. So, what I want to get up, this is a point I wanted to make because I know a lot of people in the past have complained that, oh, well, Macross Zero destroys the canon of Macross because they put Ghost in the in the, the Unification War and all this other bullshit, right? Well, it turns out there's actually a specific line that Hayase says in the very first episode um, saying uh, uh, Ghost Squadron's launch in Japanese, right? And so, the, the idea of the ghost has been there since the beginning of Macross, the very beginning. So, the fact that the ghosts were in the original TV series means that what Kawamori did was zero to add those, like, not completely AI ghosts, but you, you get the prototype idea of a, what the ghost is, in zero is perfectly in line with the canon. So, <clears throat> so people who complain like, well, it just destroys what happened in Macross Plus. Is, the Macross Plus was not the very first ghost. There were ghosts in the original Macross. So, um, you might have to watch it in Japanese because I don't think the English translation of it mentions the ghosts. Um, but Hayase specifically says Ghost Squadron. Um, so. I wanted to point that out so that people who bash Zero for that particular reason now have nowhere to, ha, n now have no argument because the ghosts were there from the beginning. Now, whether they were originally designed to be AI things, we don't know what Kawamori was thinking at the time about the ghosts, but because we learned through Plus that the ghost is an unmanned fighter, and then in Zero, how he shows how they work in Zero, the ghost in um, in the original Macross TV series could be assumed to be, you know, uh, AI controlled. So, which is brought up in various um, source books, I believe, about the ghost. I can't remember off the top of my head which specific source book, but um, there's a source book and there's information out there. I've seen it in Japanese where they talk about that like the the chronology of the um the development of the ghost and it starts in zero era in the unification war then it then they have ghosts on the macross and then they go to a more advanced level with them in plus basically and then they go to the next step with them because the one in in because the sharon apple incident and them getting controlled like that they were changed to be a little bit more downgraded during the frontier era and then also during the uh delta era as well <clears throat> and then you have you know the sv303s with their little squire looking ghosts <laughs> so um that fly off their body and there's six of them <clears throat> so i wanted to get that out there um but overall i think if you can get past some of the the animation issues because of the the constraints on the the um on on time and getting the production done of the tv series the tv series is a must watch um now i think for people who have the time to watch it i would say start with the tv series and then watch the movie after that and you get the idea of what they changed how they moved things over um, because I know the movie so well, re-watching the TV series, um, I compare it to the movie and the, it makes it kind of easy for me to, to, um, 
uh, you know, look at the different events. Plus, with the the chronology done, which people should pay attention to, because that's the official chronology. <clears throat> um, which everybody should watch that video, because I went through a lot of effort to translate all that stuff. Um, I I think if you have the time to invest into watching the TV series, you should do it. I think that you will find Mean Me, instead of the image of her in the movie as kind of a brat and selfish and, and all this other stuff and, and, you know, like, she she doesn't care about anybody else and, and all this other stuff. That happens in the TV series as well, but in a different way. And it actually leads to Hikaru and Hayase having a, a strained relationship, you could say. They're not really dating, but they're dating and it's really weird. But um, I think that you'll find <coughs> the if you can line up the events of how they change the movie, so you understand how like the events in the TV series and how they changed them to adapt them to the movie, it makes a little more sense, um, and it makes the movie a little bit un you can understand the movie a little bit better, I think. But I think the movie does things in a better way in certain situations. Like Roy's death I thought was really heroic and he deserved a death like that. Um, Kakizaki, you know, uh, is actually a pretty good pilot. Except in the TV series you see him as kind of a like, bumbling idiot kind of thing. This kind of bumbling idiot kind of character. In c contrast to Max's cool, you know, like... <clears throat> um, you know, ability to pilot and stuff like that. Um, so I, I definitely think if you have the time, watch the TV series. If, you, if you're crunched on time, watch the movie. Um, if you've never watched the original Macross, right? I think that if you, um, I mean, if you watch the movie and then you go back and watch a TV series which I did bring up this discussion during that uh, podcast thing I did. Um, that was one of the things that we brought up, was the what we should watch first. And I said, do you remember love? And, and one of the people who joined was um, uh, saying it should be the original TV series. Now, I will say this, that... I will agree that if you watch the movie first and you see that amazingly done animation and it's all of Mikimoto's artwork as is, you know, on the screen and then you go back and watch the TV series, you're going to be quite disappointed in the quality of the animation. You're going to be very, very disappointed. But I think that you need to ignore the animation quality for the TV series. The story is well done. Um, mean Mei is a really good character. I think she's the main character. Kind of like, you know, Freya is the main character of the second Delta movie. Um, I think that that's the best comparison to make is, is Freya in the second Delta movie is, is basically the main character of the movie. Hayate's kind of just there. Um, he's not really the, the, the protag at all. It's definitely Freya. Um, I think that if you look at it from Mean Mei's perspective and you try to Watch Mean May's development throughout um, the TV series. I think you'll enjoy the TV series a lot more. Um, because I think too many people look at like Ichijo as a main character. <clears throat> and of course he's a catalyst for so many of the events. But I think if you look at it from Mean May's perspective, it's, it's quite a bit different. I think it's a much more enjoyable um, show. Um, kind of like how I say... When you watch the second Delta movie, you should watch it from Freya's perspective, not from Hayate's perspective. And it will be a much in, more enjoyable uh, movie, and it will be a much more powerful movie. Um, like, of course, in the in Do You Remember Love, I think Ichijo is the main character, so Mime is kind of relegated to the background a little bit. Um, which kind of sucks. I think Mime deserves more of a direct like lead role outside of like the the singing stuff that she had the tv series does that though so i think um the the tv series is a good chance to see 
what they were going for in general and then what they did to go back and rearrange things to make the movie. Um, but if you do have the time, watch this first, then watch Do You Remember Love? Um, otherwise, you'll get completely disappointed by the animation and some things you may not like in the TV series compared to the movie. Um, but they each have their, their, their um, pros and cons. Um, I think, you know, being a Max and Maria fanboy and the episode Viva Maria. Oh, I love that episode. Um, because it's all, it's like mainly Max Maria and, and Comedia Maria. Um, and, um, you know, Maria's way of, uh, you know, raising Comedia is really funny. So I think, um, and then, you know, Max trying to teach her how to be a, like, more, like a person is actually really, really interesting. Um, I think um, everybody should watch that. Um, I think um, uh, it's definitely like once you, if you do get to have some time it eventually, you should watch the TV series. Um, I think um, I will never say don't watch the TV series. Oh, it's not canon or something. There's events in the TV series that are considered canon, like in um was it the episode romanesque which is the second to last episode um one of the pilots in skull squadron with ichijo as a black guy and i've mentioned this before is that he has been uh rewritten to be milliard johnson from macros plus so there there's that little you know easter egg there <clears throat> so when he pops up for one little scene you can say they have him made his uh, Johnson from Macross Plus, and that that kind of makes a connection to Macross Plus because there's not a whole lot of stuff in Plus that really has anything to do with you know the first Macross or anything else. So, which is kind of sad because I outside of like you know Kate singing you know Watashi no Kare wa Piloto and then basically um, is I think that's like the only thing that really directly relates to. Like a direct connection to the first Macross is only that one little song, so. Um, but I, I I do recommend it. People should watch it. Um, I rewatching it again. I haven't rewatched it for about a year. I think. I I think I rewatched it last year. Um, and you know, I didn't hear. I didn't realize the ghost thing at the time and then I re-listened it this time and I'm like oh they're talking about the ghost in, in the original Macross so the ghost has been there so anybody bitching about Zero having ghosts needs to shut up because it was there in the beginning um so um uh, I, I do recommend it if you have the time to go through it um I you know finally had a chance to rent the DVDs because I couldn't find a decent place to download them from. So I rented them, um, ripped them onto my, com uh, uh, dropped them onto my computer so I could watch it. Um, and I, it was a lot more enjoyable than the last time I watched it. So I think with the TV series, it might take a few watchings to really, you know, enjoy it to its fullest. But if you know what happens in the movie and you go back and watch the TV series and you can place where they change the events and things like that, it actually does make it kind of interesting. Um, I think that the movie does certain things better. I think the TV series does certain things better. Um, but um, it's definitely worth a watch. And this year, like last year, I'm... Uh, which I've mentioned before, I'm going to be doing a Macross Marathon by myself, and I'm going to be, you know, getting nice and tipsy while I'm I'm watching it. Um, last year, I didn't have the second Delta movie on hand to watch in chronological order, so this year I do, and I'm going to be doing that from December 31st. I'm going to start in the morning, so um, I will definitely give my impressions. I'll do a quick impression video of my second Macross Marathon after that. Um, but I wanted to at least get this out of the way. Um, 
because I know that I promised to get this done and I finally got it done. So I hope um, people, um, I hope everybody does watch it, watch the TV series at some point. Um, I, I enjoyed it much more than I, I, because I, I'm so much into the movie that I didn't think I would, you know, like pay much attention to some of the, the, the more detailed stuff of the TV series. And, but once I finally, you know, paid more attention to it, I enjoyed it. Uh, excuse me. Um, I, I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. And I still think this scene is probably the best scene in the TV series. I think this is one of the, the best scenes in, in the Macross TV series. Outside of Viva Maria. Now, the whole episode is just amazing. But that that's because, you know, the Max Miria fanboy in me is, is you know, uh, showing. But um, I hope people are happy with this. Um, especially because I'm just doing it off the cuff, you know, right after I finish watching the final episode. Um, but... I think pay attention to little details of the characters in this in the TV series. Try to ignore some of the the issues with the animation because there's quite a few of them. Um, but uh, pay attention to the character development. I think if you really look at the characters of the original Macross TV series, the show is so good. It is absolutely amazing, and um, I. I I'm not sure where I'd place it on a TV series ranking yet, but um, I will. I may do a ranking video of um, uh, the best TV series of Macross. I might just talk about the TV series and not anything else, um, because I think that that needs. I, I think that would be a good um, little video to talk about that kind of stuff. But that's for another time. And um, I hope people enjoyed this. And I will be doing my marathon. And then probably right after I finish watching Macross Plus, which I'm going to watch the movie edition for the marathon, I'll probably take a break for a minute to do my review of Macross Plus. And then... Um, I won't post it right away, of course, but I'll at least record it, and then I'll move on to watching Seven, which is the slog of the century. Oh, God. When I did the marathon last year, it was... Um, seven really beat me down. <laughs> seven. As much as I like Seven, it beat me down. And so... Um, because it's just so long. It's... 27 hours or something like that it's just out of control so plus you still got the movie edition and the ova you know dynamite 7 involved in that too but enough of that um but i i this is a classic show i think everybody should watch it as it was supposed to be done in japanese because I don't think the English translations up until this point have been worthy of anything. Um, I think if you can find a way to, to watch it subbed and watch it in its original form, it's much better. Um, definitely, um, it's a classic that cannot be ignored. And I recommend it to everybody. Um, because... It's Macross, and Macross should be recommended outside of the Delta TV series and the first Delta movie. Well, Delta TV series a little bit, but the second, the first Delta movie can just piss off. Um, but I do want people to understand that this show is what actually influenced Gundam. The Valkyries um, and the transforming, you know, if you want to call it a gimmick, you can call it a gimmick or whatnot was the reason why there were transforming mobile suits in Zeta Gundam. It was because of Macross. So nobody should ever forget that. Macross influenced Gundam. And Kawamori actually had a big influence on Gundam as well. But before that, before he even did Macross. 
But I want to make another point is that before I end this video is that Kawamori um, uh, his basis of making the show was not Gundam but it was space battleship Yamato. He was a big fan of Yamato which is why the show is about the ship in you know Macross. It, the ship is a primary role of everything. It, it plays the central role in almost everything in, in both the movie and the TV series. So um, I just want people to keep that in mind that this is it's a space drama with a love triangle and it, it was more based off of Space Battleship Yamato than anything else. Um, it's definitely worth a watch. You should watch it. It's amazing. Um, and I will get the heck out of here. So I hope that uh, people will enjoy this. Um, I'm going to have to find some uh, other content to make, but I think I will do a ranking of the TV series at some point of Macross, not the movies, because, you know, we all know what my order is going to be. Um, and I already did a ranking of all my favorite Macross stuff anyway, so. Um, but anyway, I will see y'all next video, and I hope you enjoy this one.